Hey guys, Westy on the mic here. Hey guys, uh, this is Westy with another multiplayer match. This time I'm matched up against UC in a one-on-one -on -one and we have some sweet layouts, uh, some very tricky holes, and UC and I definitely had a challenge out on these courses. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, as most of you know, he is a very, very uh, good player and a, an extremely tough matchup anytime I go against him. So this is Ikigai Springs Hole 3. I nearly always go for this bounce off of the cliff now. I can't remember if I learned that from Bama Nanum or Aaron Christensen or maybe it's both of their line. Uh, somewhere on the Global Disc Golf Discord is where I picked up that line. And it is very consistent and it's my, uh, my staple for this hole. And then with this win, it's very tricky. I tried to turn it over much further, but was not able to. Regardless, was able to sneak through those trees, and I got up and down for the eagle. And it looks like UC had a little bit of trouble on his drive. I can't tell if he was out of bounds and went to the drop zone or not. It's possible that he did. I can't tell for sure or not, so we'll see if he's going for his eagle or, nope. Okay, yep, he was going for his birdie. So, you see ends up with the birdie. I do have the one stroke lead early, but there are a lot of challenging holes in this layout. This is one that's been pretty tricky for me recently. I generally go Accurate Glide Warship on the right side, but with this wind, I didn't want to trust the ground play or my angle control. Just went with the forehand up the left side. Um, those are the kind of two plays I do on this hole. We'll see what UC does. It right, looks like he is coming right side. Could be a warship, which looks like what I normally do. Oh, wow, that's sliding a lot more than I would expect. Hard to tell what that disc is. Regardless, I think he did stick the island, yep. And he got his birdie as well. So my lead remains at one. And uh, well played on that tricky win by UC as well. This one, hole seven. Basically... This par five is not that difficult unless you put yourself in trouble off of the drive. If you're having to make up ground, bad things can happen on that second and sometimes the third shot. I'm in a pretty good spot here. It's kind of awkward to be so far left, but should be able to handle it. We'll see. Oh, didn't put quite enough hyzer on it. I thought I did. Oh, regardless, I get super lucky to beat both of those trees. Still in a weird spot, but... I don't think I would have been able to get the birdie or have a chance at it if I'd hit one of those two trees. That would have been like probably 50, 60 feet back. I decided to go around the trees there uh, with the hyzer. Did not want to mess with those. Um, sometimes angles can be tricky on this hole. Kind of tricky with this wind here. Dang. I thought I had that one. Left it a little too high. Always hurts when those don't stay in the chains, but every once in a while, you know, it's just going to happen. And now we're locked up again after three holes. Three par fives in our first four holes, that's always fun. I never really get aggressive and try to do the crazy Anheuser backhand on this hole. I am always very comfortable with just being right in the middle of this fairway and having a high, lofty hyzer uh, with a chance of going in. Do I make it? No, I don't know if I've ever made it, at least not an MP. But I feel a lot better knowing that I'm Probably gonna end up with the eagle if things, you know, don't go really weird. Anyway, looks like UC played a safe line as well, and he's coming in, lands the green, and it looks like we'll both take the eagle here. A lot of rolling there. We'll see if I don't know if that ground play was real or not, but regardless, on the green, and all knotted up still through hole four. I believe it was Herringwood's four that's coming up next. Yep. And I do not mind this wind. This is one of my most aced holes. I really like seeing this one in MP. I think I probably aimed a little bit too low there. Um, I like to aim just maybe a click higher. Oh no, it looks like UC may have got a terrible kick off the basket and rolled all the way down. We'll see if uh, he's able to save his... Oh, yep, he saves his birdie. Sweet. So he rolled down but didn't uh, go in the water and wasn't too obstructed, at least as far as I know, to get his birdie look off. And then this one, Harrowing Woods, eight. Yeah, eight. So these are three of my favorite holes on Harrowing Woods. So fun uh, to get this course and get these three holes. I landed in what's pretty much a perfect spot for me. Maybe slightly too close. I can't decide if I want to go full power with this forehand or not. 
This is a hole um, where I kind of have all my distances dialed in from like 190, uh, bummer, from 190 up to like 220 back there. And they're pretty much all on four hands from uh, my hope up to my claymore. I don't like to do backhand if I can help it just because then if you airball, you can slip all the way into the water. And that's the one thing we're for sure trying to avoid on that hole. Don't want to take the par. Eagle is nice, but birdie's what we're really after. This hole, I always go turn, glide, rive. I almost never slide long, so that was a two tail wind, and that's good to know. I probably should not do quite that full power if I ever have a three tail wind. Regardless, I'm safe there. Looks like UC pushed the border, but I think he's safe as well. Ooh, we may be a little too deep there, but I'm guessing he'll find a way out. Uh, so this hole gave us both a little bit of a scare, but regardless, we both took the birdie. That one danger can come in quickly, but it's also not that difficult. So we'll see what happens on this hole. I usually go forehand sapphire. I like to hit that gap that I was aiming at there. This turned it over way more than I thought. Somehow got lucky to get past that tree. Not complaining. We take the good and the bad breaks here. And then we'll make this putt. Remember, always aim down a click from inside 30, 35 feet. Just one click, it's not really gonna affect your range much, at least not from that distance, but it will make it, so you will not get a spit out on that putt. I've never aimed down and gotten a spit out. On to hole nine, we'll see if either of us can take a stroke. I'm never trying for eagle here, even with a perfect drive, I'm just gonna lay it up for birdie. And I've recently started playing light glide rive on this hole and just kind of aiming high and not trying to cut the corner. One of the mistakes I've made often is cutting that corner. So I've tried to put a little more Anheuser or aim for the right, but then every once in a while when I do that and I use the glide skip rive, it bounces long and I go OB deep there. So OB is bad no matter how you do it. So that's my play right now. It's just like glide rive under the big part of the fairway. All right, uh, tie game, but a very fun match with UC. Let's check out his bag. He always has some awesome stuff. Ooh, got that fun grayscale accurate glide musket. Got the epic cloud breaker, accurate big skip sapphire. Looks like a Yuli champ disc, Avenger SS perhaps. Got the tester team captain, the winner boss rive. A cool Monopoly get out of jail, water skip rive. Pretty epic bag here, as he always has. A couple more, at least one more tester disc on the right. That fun Simon Lozadl instinct disc. Man, just crazy fun discs all around there. Always fun to match up and see what he's got in the bag uh, being on the tester team. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, catch me next time.